If you're looking to understand how the complete turnkey experience can work investing in the Cleveland market and you only got time to watch one of my shows, this is the one. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Now Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holt Wise TV. If you want to learn how to invest in Cleveland, you want to do it passively, you want to work with my team, you want to utilize uh, our experience, right? $200 million plus in sales, largest scattered site real estate portfolio in the market, right? Whole Cleveland area, right? You drive down the rental neighborhoods, you ain't see no more signs than the Holton Wise signs, right? You see my trucks, you see my team, right? We're everywhere. We know what we're doing, okay? You know, we've perfected this model and we help investors like you uh, perfect it, right? So today I'm working with a new investor. Uh, her name is Patricia. Patricia, you're from Cleveland and uh, this is the first time I've worked with you and you've got a whole slew of questions for me. So I'm going to go through those line by line, one by one for you. I love the questions, by the way, Patricia. Uh, that goes for everybody else who's watching this. You guys want to start working with us? Uh, and you got questions, right? We have a fact. It's on HoltonWise.com, right? Check that out. A lot of video tutorials. But uh, that doesn't necessarily answer every question you may have. And when you guys order your MLS search analysis packages from me, I'm working with you one-on-one. -on -one. My goal is to get you to understand uh, this process, understand what it's going to be like to be an investor, properly set your expectations, right? I'm not here to, to, to convince you guys uh, – to become real estate investors. That's that's on you, man. If you want to be a real estate investor and you want to know what that's like, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to give you the most transparent outlook at what this business is going to be like and what it could be like for you. I'm not here to convince you to do it, right? I wasn't always a wealthy real estate investor, right? I had no money growing up, but you know what? I got into real estate and I made a lot of money. So I know real estate makes money. It did wonders for me. Up to you to figure out if it can do wonders for you. But I will explain to you what we can best do with what you have going on, and I can really set your expectations. So because of all that, man, I love when I get a whole slew of questions from you guys, right? Just just give me those questions, right? And you know what? Maybe after I answer all of them, maybe uh, what you thought it was going to be like, maybe that's not really the case, and maybe real estate isn't for you. I don't know. It's not going to be for everybody. So uh, let's get through that now. Uh, where you're just spending a few hundred bucks on an analysis, my time, my consulting versus, you know, you drop in several hundred thousand dollars and then realizing real estate isn't for you. Because, dude, you got to be tough. It's a tough business, okay? Uh, and that's, again, why we have all the content we have showing you the rough stuff, right? People sometimes ask me, like, dude, you make money selling investment properties. Why do you show so much bad stuff to tenants do? Because that's what they do, right? That's what happens, guys. I what what would be the point of trying to sell you properties and not telling you about that stuff? That's what's going to happen. You're going to be real pissed off later when that happens, and I never presented that to you, right? That would, That's not good for the long haul, right? That's not good for everybody, right? This is. So with all that said, Patricia, uh, here's where you're at. You reached out to me. You want to do flips, right? But you have $50,000 in cash. And one of your questions is, do you somehow get pre-qualified so that when something comes on the market, you can make an offer, right? So first, let's just address this, okay? Here's the situation. With where the Cleveland market is at today, in 2021, as I talk to you, right? It's like late April, okay? <clears throat> I feel that there is probably no scenario where you're going to be able to... Uh, have your $50,000, utilize that as a down payment, get a conventional lender to loan you the rest, and then you'll be able to buy a property at a price that's so cheap that you can do all that, flip the property, and make a profit. It's not practical. It's not going to happen. The market is too hot, right? To buy a flip, to do a flip, what you really need is a property that's incredibly distressed, right? You need that buyer pool to be shrunk down to where it's only going to be cash buyers, right? Because if you're getting a loan on a property, that means the property is in livable condition, and then you're opened up to all types of buyers, right? First-time home buyers, investors, handymen, things of that nature, right? It's just too competitive. 
and it's right now the the prices are so competitive it's even hard for cash investors to find enough deals to flip so uh you would just be going into a gunfight essentially with a knife right uh if you're going to try to flip properties in the cleveland market you can do it but you really need to have cash in the bank ready to go about 100 to like 150k that's what i'd like to see you have i mean we could do some nice flips in some b-grade neighborhoods right where you're buying the properties uh in your your acquisition costs and your rental costs your all-in costs is like between like 90 and like 120 130k your arvs are like 150 to like 175k things of that nature right but doing this uh with only 50k it's not possible right uh sellers are of course going to take the cash offers uh the cash offers don't have to pay for financing things of that nature right so those people could even afford to pay more than you so uh you're not going to be able to be a house slipper with what you have today now, does that mean you can never be a house flipper? No, right? You just need to save up, right? At least another $50,000. Now, as far as you getting pre-qualified, though, so you can make offers on properties, right? There are other strategies. House flipping is not the only thing you can do, right? You can buy long-term rental properties, which I have one for you today, but we'll get into that later, right? So, yes, uh, you do want to get pre-qualified if you're planning on utilizing your 50K as a down payment on a property. Remember, not going to be reasonable for that to to be a flip deal though right but there's other options so what i'm going to do is as i send you this video privately i will also include a list of lenders for you to speak with and you want to get pre-qualified okay now uh one of your next questions is you asked if uh how this whole video process is going to work right do you send addresses to me and i analyze them do i find properties for you the answer is both i do them both right um you purchased a package of videos. I'm giving you this video, and I'm going to get your feedback after after this video, right? Because remember, going into this video, you were thinking you were going to flip some houses. But hopefully after this video, you're in agreement with me that that that's really not going to be in the cards for you right now. So after you get this video, let me know how you'd like to go for it. I can, if you like, first of all, I'm going to show you a property in this video today. If you like that, let me know. We'll make an offer. You're going to get pre-approved through my lenders, and we can make an offer. Maybe that's your first deal. If you're not feeling that deal, let me know how you want to go forward. You can go forward by saying, hey, like what you're saying, let me find some properties on the market that I like, and I'll send them to you, James, and you tell me if they're good deals. We could do that. You could also say, James, based on uh, what you just told me in my video, uh, I'd like you to find me properties uh, that hit X, Y, and Z uh, goals of mine, right? And then I could go out and find properties and send them to you. It's, it's whatever you want, right? This is an a la carte service, right? So you could find them, send them to me. I'll give you my unbiased opinion. You could tell me uh, after getting my feedback on uh, where you want, what you want me to try to see what I can uh, come up with for you, and I'll go out there on the market and I'll shoot things to you, okay? Now, what else we got? Other questions here. OK, uh, I would prefer, given my lack of experience, that you make recommendations, but I will do whatever your program calls for. At any rate, I look forward to working with you and your team to hear back. Thanks much. Uh, P.S. I want to know what market slash areas of town you think would be best to meet my needs. OK, now with that question, that's going to lead me into the property I have for you today. Where I think you should go right now with what you want to do is long-term cash flowing rentals right in the c and d neighborhoods i think those would be best for you right because again flipping is just not going to be in the cards right i think you can take your fifty thousand dollars and utilize it as a down payment and pick up one two possibly three cash flowing assets okay from there you're going to continue to make your money at your day job, and then you're going to draw in rental property profits, and you can grow that business. And then when you get enough cash, we could then look into doing some flips for you, or you can just continue rolling those into more long-term rental property investments. But that's just my thoughts based on what you've told me about your situation thus far after this video I want to hear your thoughts, and that's how we'll address going forward. So what we're going to do now is go into a quick commercial break. I want you to get some swag for me, and then we'll take a look at this property and go from there. <laughs> 4211 Store Ave, Cleveland, 44109. Been on the market four days. 
And we need to move. We need to move quick, right? The Cleveland market, yeah, as, as you're probably aware, it's insane, dude. There's just so many people uh, bidding on these properties because the price-to-rent ratios are nuts, right? The price-to-rent ratios in Cleveland are so much more attractive than the majority of the country. This particular property, in my opinion, uh, listed at a price point that's going to uh, be GAT, a major bidding war, okay? $99,000. Now, we only have two photos because it's fully occupied, all right? That's okay, though, right? We got the front house here, right? We have a front house and we have a back house, okay? Between these two homes, right, we have three total units, right? And the market rent for each of these units is going to be $750, $750, and $900, right? Uh, the two $750 ones, those are duplex units, two ones. And then we have a separate two-family house, right? So $900, right? So it's even... Uh, more attractive than a traditional triplex, right? Because one is a full freaking house, okay? So you're looking at a market rent every month of 2400 or 28800 Now, as far as the price goes, they've listed at 99000 which just based upon that rent roll would seem super low. The reason they're pricing it that low is they do not have the rents up to market, right? So you're going to slowly need to increase those. Currently, they got people in there at 450 420 and 485 right? But that is one of the great things about real estate investing, man. If you guys know how to do this the right way, you can look at other people, maybe mom-and-pop landlords like this one who are running these properties, not as efficiently as they could. And that's how we create value. That's how we get these crazy deals, right? Because I tell you what, if this was a professional investor, a professional turn turnkey company, professional reseller, and they're bringing in $2,400 a month in rent currently, which is where this should be for the long haul. That's what Holton Wise will be able to target for you when we take over the management. You ain't selling it for 99 k dude. That doesn't make any sense because the numbers would be insane, right? $2,400 a month comes in, $28,800 a year after fixed and variable expense estimates, right? I anticipate this property costing an investor $13,096 a year on average to operate, leaving you with a $15,704 a year NOI. You pick it up at the price of $99,000, your mortgage down payment's only $24,750, right? How insane is that, right? $24,750 is all you need to bring to the table. Bank kicks in another seventy-five k. That would be a 46.3% cash on cash return or a cap of sixteen. That is, of course, if we can get the tenants, all three of which, from where they currently are, up to market rent. Now, this is the show where I cut it to you straight. This is the show where I talk to you about transparency in the real estate business. Is it possible that we could take our three legacy tenants, our three inherited tenants, paying below market rent, again, 450, 420, 485? Can we possibly get them up to 750, 750, 900 without a turnover? Yes, it's possible. And I just gave you the numbers on what it would look like if we do that theoretically. However, in real world, is that practical? Probably not. I would say the odds are unlikely that you're going to get these three folks from where they currently are to market rent without at least doing one turnover, right? That's why when we run these numbers, we factor in vacancy, non-payment. We factor in repairs and maintenance, right? Because when you're a rental property investor, the majority of um, your repairs, right? They typically come at the turnover, right? People see like a repair estimate, like on this particular property, repairs and maintenance, we're estimating $120 a month. People see that and they get it like in their head, like, oh, I'm going to spend $120 every single month on repairs. No, it's not how it works, right? You're probably going to have like a tenant in there in that particular unit and you're going to go through like 10, 12, 14, 18 months of spending nothing. And then boom, when the tenant turns over, then you're dropping a few grand, things of that nature, right? That's how that works out, right? So, do I think that you can get those rents all the way up there without some type of turnover? Probably not, right? Maybe one, maybe two of the tenants, maybe we get them up. Uh, but I can't, you know, tell you with a certainty uh, how many of those tenants 
uh, when and where that turnover is going to happen. So, right, as you're analyzing this property, think about making the investment. You have to understand that that is a risk, right? Turnover is part of the real estate investment business, right? Nobody gets rental properties and places tenants in there and gets 30, 40 year tenants all the time. That's just not practical, right? So, uh, what you have going for you is right now, they can't get comparable units like this for anywhere near those prices. So what I like to do to lower the probability that they're going to turn because you increase the rent is I don't like to go in and be like, yo, market rent's 900, you're paying 485. Next lease, boom, you got to pay 900. I think that is going to give you a high chance that they're just going to be like, oh, dude, I can't afford it, and they will move out, right? And then you're almost guaranteed to spend that money on a turn. What I like to do, I like to raise the rents nice and slow. 50 this year, 50 next year, right? It'll still cash flow. The price is so freaking cheap, it'll still cash flow at the current rent. So I like to go nice and slow and keep those butts in the units, right? Because we make our money in this business by turning our units over as few times as possible. If you own a apartment building, you own, let's say you own one unit, right, for 20 years, the guy who makes the most money is the guy who turns it over the least amount of times over those 20 years. So, 99000 is what they're asking. I think we got to offer 99000 at the minimum. You let me know what you want to offer. I do not anticipate anything other than a massive bidding war. If it were me, I'd probably be willing to kick 10k above list price, but you let me know and I'll write it up. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.